So in today's video, I want to talk a little bit more about star photography and how to capture the Milky Way or any star in the in the galaxy. Uh, and the first thing is have the right equipment. So the main thing you need is a sturdy tripod. Uh, this one is great for the R5 or the 5D Mark IV. And then this little tripod, it's a great travel tripod, it's a Vanguard. I really like it, but it's too light for the R5. So I use this one for the Canon M6 Mark II that I had converted to infrared. Also, I'm gonna be using a wide angle lens. This is a Sigma 16 millimeter, so it's a very wide angle lens for the crop sensor. And it's also a 1.4, so it is a very large aperture that's gonna let in a lot of light, especially when you shoot in the night sky, you need as much light as you can absorb. Uh, I'm also gonna be using the Canon R5 with the 15 to 35. This is my widest angle for this camera and it is a f2.8. So that's also a very large aperture and that's gonna let a lot of light come in so you can see those stars nice and sharp. You also wanna remember to bring a remote. There's multiple uh, styles. This is just a single remote trigger or an intervalometer. Uh, they both do the same thing. This one's just a little more complicated. And if, if you don't have a, a remote or an intervalometer, you can always use your timer, a 10 second timer or a two second timer. This will help you get steady shots because every time you click the shutter, there's always a little bit of shake. By using a two or 10 second timer, you'll avoid that camera shake. And another thing that's very important to do is bring extra batteries because you're gonna need them. What's up guys, heading back to Glacier National Park. This place is incredible. I went uh, a little while ago and did a hike. I wanted to make a video, but that didn't work out. Uh, but the hike was beautiful. Uh, I was also hoping to see a lot of wildlife and I did see a goat. Let me pop that picture here in the screen. Uh, and a squirrel or chipmunk or whatever this is. Oh yeah, I did. And I saw a bear, but I had the camera in all the wrong settings. <laughs> so this is the best I got. <laughs> uh, but now I'm heading back into the park for a sunset. Um, there were some clouds earlier and it looked like it was gonna be amazing. Now there's no clouds. Something that I've always liked to do is go out for sunset and then stay until dark. Uh, this gives you a chance to maybe get a really good sunset photo. And if not, then at least you're able to see and compose while there's some ambient light. Trust me, it's really hard to compose at night when it's pitch dark and, and you can't really see what you're focusing or what you're doing. I'm curious as to how the little, um, the Canon M6 Mark II that I had converted to infrared is gonna do in uh, for nighttime. So anyway, let me uh, hurry up and go find a spot to set up and go from there. So sunset didn't happen as planned. All the clouds that were here earlier kind of blew away and disappeared. So uh, let's sit up and see if we can get some star pictures. I like the background. Okay, so I am not gonna need the telephoto so that one can stay here. Don't wanna carry extra stuff if I don't have to. That's a Sigma 1.4, 16 millimeter. And the light in case you need to see me. And for the other camera, I'm bring the fisheye. So to get the stars, I need to focus manually. And I can't really see what I'm focusing on. I can't zoom in the live view, or if I can, I haven't figured out how. And, uh, oh, there we go. It does have zoom. Oh, that's perfect. That'll work. So I'm using an app that's called Planet. Planet uh, Pro. It was like, I think it was like 10 bucks. I can't remember, but it's awesome. It tells you where the stars are going to be, where the Milky Way is going to be, where the sun and the moon. So it really helps you plan uh, to get your shots. So I think I'm gonna set it up here, 
the Milky Way should be here around 10.30. It's gonna come that way and move across the sky. So at 10.30, it should be right here in the middle. changing my plan because uh, again this is turning out to be one of those days where things just don't quite work out uh, mm. the I, meant, I wanted to do a time lapse and get the stars moving across the, the sky and I brought my intervalometer which is this thing here the problem is that's made for the big camera and not for the little crop camera crop sensor I don't know what happened on the first day but it's very important for you to know your gear, know your settings, know everything about the camera you're going to be using. I haven't really shot at night with the Canon M6. I knew it has a built-in time-lapse feature uh, that records everything right into a video. And when I tried to use this the first night, it wasn't letting me change the settings and go under uh, an eighth of a second. Uh, you'll see here in the video. So, um, the camera has a built-in intervalometer or a time-lapse feature in the video but um, the slowest shutter speed I can use is an eighth of a second and I need six seconds per image so that's not gonna work <laughs> later when I got home I changed the settings and it was fine I could go all the way up to 30 seconds so there was something there's something with me or with the camera but this day, everything was going wrong. So I don't know what to blame it on, <laughs> but just, you know, make sure to check your camera, check your settings, make sure that you know your gear inside out before you go out in the dark and you can avoid some frustration like this. Uh, it's kind of freaky being out here in the dark. You hear the leaves and things and somebody's seen a bear about a mile up the road. But anyway, back to the, the camera. Um, it does have a built-in what's it called a timer so it takes an image every second but it only goes up to 99 images so i'm gonna try that and see if i can get uh, the stars moving across the sky with the lake and everything uh, i don't know the way today's going i don't know what i'm gonna get it is kind of creepy out here being in the dark knowing that there's bears and other stuff whatever it's we'll see i'm sure i'll be fine and just to clarify, a time-lapse is just back-to-back -back individual pictures uh, played back at 24 frames a second, so 24 pictures in one second or faster. Now, the good thing about not being able to use the camera to capture uh, the time-lapse on video is that this forced me to get individual pictures. And now I can do a time-lapse with these individual pictures. I can choose the best out of these images, or I can also use another program and make a star trail like this one. So I'm out again uh, for night sky photography because yesterday was awesome. I really like how the Milky Way was moving across the sky. Unfortunately, it did not stay past 11. <laughs> it started to get a little freaky there with the noises and, and you know, I, on the drive here today, uh, I've seen four or five bear. So I know they live here. Uh, earlier today, I went and did a hike. It was awesome. So I'm gonna be making another video about that. <laughs> After the hike, I went home, I had lunch. I actually had a couple of lamb chops that I barbecued and I, uh, I forgot to change my shirt. So now guess who smells like barbecue? <laughs> I hope the bear sense of smell is it as good as they say it is. But anyway, let me get to showing you here how to set this camera to do unlimited back-to-back -back images. And you can set a timer as to how, in be how long in between each picture. So I think you can see that on the screen. This is the Canon M6. 
Um, and this is what I'm looking at. There's a hotel over there. I just took a picture. Blurry. There's a hotel over there, the mountains, and the lake. This is going to look awesome. But to get the settings, to get the interval, I have to go to camera settings. And then number six has the interval timer. So I'm going to enable it. And then it says number of shots. Yesterday, it went up to 100 and I kept trying to go more, more, more and it wouldn't go anymore. But if I go to zero, it says unlimited. I was at 99 and I couldn't believe that I couldn't do any more. All I had to do was push uh, up one more, which I did yesterday, but apparently it was too cold to notice. And um, it goes to unlimited. So now it'll take a shot. Let me change this every two seconds and until the memory card fills up or the battery dies whatever happens first so the reason i chose six and four seconds for these cameras yesterday uh, is because i want the stars to be sharp like tack sharp like little pinpoints i use an app that's called uh, photo pills and i think it was about 10 bucks and that one helps you you put your camera model your lens and your uh, it tells you where you're going to get acceptable shots and then if you want pin sharp stars what settings to use so that's if I didn't explain myself yesterday, that's what it is. So the one thing that's really hard at night is focusing on the stars. If this lens doesn't have uh, the ring. The <laughs> so usually you go to infinity and come back a little bit, take a couple of test shots and try again. But because this is mirrorless, I can zoom in. It gives me a preview. So there's the house there. And if you, I, I zoom in, which is right now it's a manual focus. I hit info. Here's a magnifying thing there's a star so let me go in at 10 times zoom and now i can focus until that star looks as sharp as can be and that's it i do a test shot if i like it great if not i refocus and try again but that's that's how easy mirrorless cameras are made focusing on stars and things like this and then talk about settings real quick so the, you want to use your widest aperture in this case this is a 1.4 lens so I'll be shooting a 1.4. Now I'm going to use an ISO of 3200. 30, I think it's enough for this. Uh, if there was a little bit of moonlight, I would go a little bit less. But it's a moonless night, so that's not going to work. Uh, and then four seconds because I don't. I want this stars to be sharp. On the R5, I have a 2.8 lens, so that's going to be a 5,000 or 6,400 uh, ISO speed. So, and yeah six to eight seconds that's all it takes all right let me set up the cameras it's starting to get dark and i'm gonna go get in the jeep so i don't become bear barbecue <laughs> If you're interested in learning more about how to put a time lapse together or how to do a star trail, just please let me know in the comments and I'll make a video about that. Uh, but right now, uh, I'm going to be making a video for Wednesday and I really need everyone's help. If you made it to the end of this video, that tells me you are a supporter of the channel and you want to help me out and I have a very complicated decision to make about the future of the channel. So please tune in on Wednesday and uh, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and I will see you on Wednesday. Bye.